Praise the Lord. Again, ladies and gentlemen, I thank you all for connecting to the program this far. And I bless the name of the Lord for what he has in store for us today. As we proceed again, I want to encourage you, if you are not having noise in your background, you can unmute your device so that I will begin to hear your response as we proceed. Hallelujah. But if you know there is noise in your background, you can stay on the mute position. Today, by the grace of God, we're going to proceed with the series of the lesson we began on the caption, Christ Prayer Lessons. Last Friday, we had part one. As we follow in the prayer content or guideline or structure set for us by Christ in what we call the Lord's Prayer. So we began with the first word of what he said in response to the question that they asked him to teach to pray or teach them to pray. And he said, when you pray, say, which we understood of the importance of sound and sound dynamics. So if you haven't uh, listened or follow up the message of last week, try to do so. These messages are there in the YouTube channel or my YouTube page, as well as even others sent to you by the Christ Disciple WhatsApp group. Please listen to them so that you don't just have shallow information, but more deeper revelation. Today we're going to continue with Christ Prayer Lessons 2 or Part 2. And our Part 2 is focused on the caption, Our Father. In this, Our Father, we will look at it in two dimensions. We'll look at it from our Father with a focus on the word our. And then we will look at our Father in the focus of our Father in heaven. But today, let's look at our Father from the point of the word or the focus of our. Hallelujah. So I'm going to read again for us Luke chapter 11. I will read from verse 1 to verse Two. Luke chapter 11 verse 1 to 2 I read inasmuch as many have taken excuse me Luke chapter 11 verse 1 and 2 I read now it came to pass as he was praying in a certain place when he ceased or stopped that one of his disciples said to him Lord teach us to pray as John also taught his disciples verse 2 he now responded from verse 2 so he the Lord Jesus said to them when you pray say our father in heaven hallowed be your name 
your kingdom come your will be done on earth as it is in heaven hallelujah praise the lord so we want to understand a little bit of what is the mind of Christ of how and what we supposed to do in terms of prayer protocol so today we looking at Christ prayer lessons part 2 on the focus or with a focus on the word hour So he told us when we pray, we say, which we understood to mean that prayer involves speaking out as we have learned about the importance of sound dynamics. And the first thing he said in the things to say is our. The first word there is our. And then you complete it attached with Father in heaven first sentence our father in heaven but the very first word is our so there's a big lesson there which is what we must learn today and pray in that dimension as the Lord grace us through the program hallelujah our father Christ is letting us know that in the real approach of prayer when we come to God the Father is not to come selfishly. That we should remember that God is not only our Father for us as an individual which could have been my father. But he said, see, our father, not my father. There is nothing wrong to seek my father as you relate with God, but which is most important in terms of personal confession and conviction to relate with him as your God. But the Lord is telling us that there is a place which is very important that in prayer we should not pray selfishly we should remember god is a god of all and many children and so in coming to our prayer whenever we come to god we should remember to come along or wish the same for others that spirit of the word our which he taught us there is trying to tell us that one of the most important power to give us the prayer that move God according to his will is a selfless prayer a prayer that is full of love a prayer that you pray with the desire for it to be well with others and not only you alone so he said we should see God as the father of others and so in that way, our prayer must be selfless. It must be a prayer of love, not thinking only for yourself alone. In that way, it means that so many prayers we pray, which concerns only me, 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 I, 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 as important as that is which is not bad but it's not as powerful as strong when our prayer involves others praying for others hallelujah or including others even in the things we ask so a lot of breakthroughs will not come and if some come they may not come easily and fast as they suppose if our prayer is full only of our consent alone and now 
When we look at the rundown of all that structure he said in that prayer, even in the account of Luke or chapter 11, as well as the account of Matthew in Matthew chapter 6, we will see that he said we should say our Father. Then when now we are to ask for something, he said we should include others. Give us, not give me. Then when we have to ask him to forgive us, which is a very important aspect here, he said we should ask forgive us, not forgive me. And then even to deliver, he said we should ask deliver us, not deliver me. So what that is showing is that the Lord is telling us that it is more important to pray for with others in your request or in your prayer. But beside the aspect of the importance, why? Because there is power and there is a lot of benefits to do so. So even if it's important sometimes for personal conviction to identify with God as my Father, my God, and ask things of forgive me, deliver me, and all that, it's important to always remember to include others. You can as well ask for others. Once there is some addition of other people in your desire and request in prayer, it empowers and facilitates answers to our prayers. Somebody say amen. amen. So there is wisdom there, but there is power. And so the structure of the model prayer he gave to us, his emphasize of the importance for us to pray and our prayer full of love, which means desiring same and seeing God as a father of many, not if not all, and not only for us as individuals. Hallelujah. So let's look at the importance. First, he said when we pray, our prayers will be full of sounds. Secondly, he said the first thing we are to mention, and the first word he told us is our plural including others love that means selfish prayers have very little to achieve and the words of kind which now from selfish to hatred prayers is by itself more disastrous against us who are praying so now he already told us, according to Mark chapter 11, verse 25, whenever we stand praying, or when we start, so as we come to prayer first, we want to, the prerequisite is to make sure we forgive those who have done us wrong. And then we ask him to forgive us of whatever we have done wrong, and possibly be ready to apologize or reconcile wherever for who we have done wrong, if before God, and ready to do so physically to with the person if we have to. So we now see here, when you go down, it's now our. He now said, ask, forgive us. We cannot ask God to forgive us our sins without having in mind that that us include others. And the others to be forgiven primarily begins with those who have done us wrong and that is why he said the first thing you do is to must have in mind the first prayer is to pray for those who have done you wrong or to forgive them so if we now say forgive us i'm including others and he said as we forgive others means before we ask him to forgive us we must forgive others and now how do we forgive others he taught us how to forgive those who have done us wrong by asking the Father to forgive them. So that shows that in his agenda, we have to first of all even ask him to forgive those who have done us wrong before asking him to forgive us of our own wrongdoing. That is why 
in asking for him to forgive us generally, it means we are including everyone that has done us wrong. And we must prove that we really meant in first forgiving them. Praise the Lord. Some important aspects relating to prayer. If a prayer is full of love, which includes involving others and wishing and desiring the, the same good for them, it will generate a lot of power and bring faster breakthroughs. Hallelujah. So with this concept of God through Christ in teaching us on prayer, we have to understand that our Father in this context is talking about coming to God in prayer with a heart of love, knowing that God is a God as a Father to all and desire the best for everyone that will come or believe. And in that way, our prayer should be more preoccupied with love and so this gives us the setting of the fact that there are three major aspects of prayer in the prayer organigram or protocol hallelujah Amen. so we have the kind of prayer in the prayer protocol which we can call selfless prayer which is the main and the most important prayer that Christ wants us to pray. Selfless love our Father. But then you also have selfish prayer which is, means that it's not sinful for you to pray and say my Father. But the my me I projection kind of prayer will not bring a lot of power to produce results faster and even sometimes powerful results. So you have the selfless, which is the highest in the category of power and the effect of results because it falls in the center of God's will that God is the father of all and many for those who believe. Then we now also have the selfish prayer, which means that selfish prayer is not sinful. It is okay for you to ask because there are scriptures that demand us to do so. But it doesn't carry the same power to produce results, especially even if he has to produce the same result with, compared to selfless prayer or prayer full of love. But he can't do it. He can't produce the result in speed. And then we have the third category class of prayer which is the diabolic prayer which we call prayer of hatred or prayer full of not just focusing on yourself I mine but prayer that you are praying with the desire of something against someone whether you call him enemy prayer you are praying for someone to die or anything someone that is prayer which is considered as hatred prayer or full of hatred that one first the highest powerful prayer and that produce which fall in the center of God's is the selfless prayer which is why Christ showed us there about in the structure starting with our and full of all the demands including others give us not me alone forgive us not me alone deliver us not me alone that is most powerful and most faster to produce results the second in the scale is selfish which is there's nothing wrong for you to ask for you alone, but that cannot produce result faster and sometimes it can produce greater results. And the third category is the worst one that doesn't 
first is not approved by the Lord, is not going to be presented even before the throne of God. And because it's not going to be presented before the throne of God, it will be presented to another throne. And that other throne, which is a negative throne, the throne of darkness, of the forces of darkness, will use that prayer against that person, either on immediately or after. Hallelujah. So let us now see that to prove the, the perfect position of the best kind of prayer that God commend us as laid down by Christ is approved by Paul as well in his priority of prayer of when we are to pray. Let us listen what Paul said in 1 Timothy chapter 2 from verse 1. Read verse 1 to 4. Therefore I exhort first of all that supplications. Therefore I exhort first of all. So Paul now is putting that also in a priority that this is the first kind of prayer to pray. Which is in line with what Christ says that what is the first thing Christ told us to say is our. And Paul is telling us praying in that same line. Continue. Supplications, prayers, intercessions, and giving of thanks be made for all men, for kings and all who are in authority, that we may lead a quiet and peaceable life in all godliness and reverence. For this is good and acceptable in the sight of God our Savior, who desires all men to be saved and to come to the knowledge of, of the truth. Hallelujah. So we see that Paul is telling us that first of all, supplication, prayers, intercession with thanksgiving. All that is prayers in the different breakout of particularities. To be made first to who? All men. What does that mean? All men is our us because all men means you are also included so Christ says if you are asking don't ask give me this day say ask give us means all men are involved in what you are asking hallelujah because whatever we are asking from God is good for all and so whosoever we believe will receive so Paul is in full uh, agreement analyzing what Christ has established. So if Christ, who is our perfect example, show us this pattern, the way to pray, that priority of the way we pray is prayer that is full of love, selfless prayer involving others and seeing God as a father of not only you alone or me alone, that desire all men to be blessed and Paul now went to analyze that and said first of all before you start asking things for my me first of all pray for all men and in a picture of what is given there in any context of a territory where there is authority whether city or nation or state you begin in that list of all men by those in authority if you want to itemize them but if you are praying for all the men generally you can still pray generally but when you want to begin to identify when you pray for those in authority you are away reaching all the people and so we also discover that with this perspective we are going to pray today more focus on that concept of our praying for what involves all men or others. Hallelujah. Amen. It's important for us to know that in any community or any society in this world, all men, referring to all the people, both male and female, you have major 
or primarily two groups of people before the scale or the lens of God towards men, towards people. You have those who are not saved that need salvation. And you have those who are saved. And so, the primary need from Christ teaching that says, what will it profit a man to gain the whole world? That means you put all the wealth in the whole world, all the money, all the resources. Christ says, if a man gain all that and loses his soul, which is to say, if he ends up not being saved, it is of no value or profit for a man, even if you give him the whole world. Say, what profit is that for a man to gain the whole world in exchange of his salvation? So that means anybody who is not truly safe, his greatest need number one of what we should pray for such is for them to receive salvation or for them to make Jesus Christ the Lord of their life and be saved like me and you. Hallelujah. And then you now have the other men, all the other people who have already believed and made Christ the Lord of their life, we can have other things to pray and desire them to get. So praying for all men primarily, generally, will always be first importantly to ask the Lord to do what he said we should do in prayer so that the harvest that is ripe, ready for to come into the kingdom as salvation should be saved. And then we ask for him to constantly, for those who are now already children of God, the primary, primary prayer to pray for such generally is for all of us who are believers already is to be filled with the knowledge of God's will in all wisdom and spiritual understanding. Because when we are now filled, the more we increase in the knowledge of God's will, the more we can know His will. And in wisdom, all we can know how to apply that knowledge of His will. And with the understanding, we will actually be able to apply the knowledge well and bear fruits fruits of righteousness as he said the seed that fell in their hearts that receive and understand then the, that is the one that bear fruits and some 30 some 60 and some 100 so if you cannot understand the seed which is the word of God you can bear fruit so for you who is already a child of God you cannot have the word of God but until you understand the word, then it cannot produce results. And the level of results you produce is proportionate to the level of understanding you have. That's why even though the seed, as Christ said in Matthew chapter 13, fell in the hearts of them that believe and that understand, but they vary, the fruits they bear is different. Why do they bear different levels of fruit? Because your fruit that you produce is a function of the level of understanding you have. Hallelujah. Amen. Even like we are learning now about the importance of praying selfless prayer. Our prayer should be preoccupied with love. If possible, most times the truth, most of the prayer points we have that apply to us individually, sometimes we may not even pray them, but by praying the same desire we have and the same prayer point for others, or praying, including others generally, we get the breakthroughs faster. Hallelujah. When you pray and personalize the prayer, they are good for conviction and activation of faith. But it's important in that way, if you are led to pray mostly that way like we do, to always add others in that prayer. 
other hand, in a certain consciousness of faith and love, most times you may not ask anything for my, me, I, but you only us and still have the breakthrough faster than those who are asking the same thing personally for I and my. This is the truth about the prayer protocol. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. So now, the focus of our subject understanding here in Christ's prayer lesson part 2 is our Father with a focus on our relating to God expecting us to have our prayer life our prayer requests full of prayer based on love full of selfless prayers not selfish that means let our prayer request list be preoccupied if not 80 percent plus with our us including others than full of my me though that is not sinful but it cannot produce the same power and effect and resolve faster as the other one so we should better key for what is the most powerful and important hallelujah Amen. now but what i want us to see here is to understand that christ cannot tell us to in the primary content and pattern of prayer to tell us to start with our including others if that was not important but again if you go you discover that he also acknowledged that we can ask certain things personally so there's nothing wrong for you to say my father in heaven there's nothing wrong for you to say give me this day my daily bread there's nothing wrong for you to say forgive me my trespasses I hope you are understanding that because I have to balance this so that we don't go to an extreme and start creating trouble. There's nothing wrong for me to say, for you to pray and say, deliver me from evil works or whatever. But it's important that if we are praying this way, because it is the consciousness of faith and the level you are that will tell you how you can hold on which one. you may not easily be that way where you feel very freely peaceful in your heart to always pray our us asking for others together and feel you may not have the faith to feel that kind of prayer answer so you will still in that leading go flow faster with i my but try to not add others in it to make it have a more uh, support of the power of love because at least you do not pray in that list of prayer only for yourself and your own things hallelujah now there is a balanced aspect on this in the teachings of christ in scriptures number one let us hear what he said in matthew chapter 7 for example matthew chapter 7 because remember prayer is all surrounded about asking and making requests apart from the prayer of praise and uh, worship but in most cases in any prayer whether it's forgiveness you are asking God to do something when we are relating with God what he now told us in Matthew chapter 7 verse 11 if you then being evil know how to give good gifts to your children how much more will your father who is in heaven give good things to those who ask him praise the Lord So he said the father is ready to give good things to those who ask him. So in that case, you are free to ask him. You can ask him personally. And he will give you. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. So when you ask him, 
to give you whatever good thing you are asking, you are still praying according to his will. But let me help us to understand the importance to focus on praying the selfless prayer, prayer of love, praying for others as well as you pray on things. Why Christ saw that as important in the whole lesson is everything is including others. Our Father, forgive us. Deliver us from evil. Give us this day. Why is that important? Because when you are too preoccupied, when we are too preoccupied in our prayers on a selfish basis, that is only I, me, my, the tendency to, in selfishness, pray diabolic or hatred, prayer of hatred is very high. Because in selfishness, it's easy to always think of only providing, protecting only your own interests. And so, that position, if it's too much what preoccupied our life, it's easy to always fight in the flesh against those who do us wrong. It's easy to pray for that enemy to receive the arrows of back to sender. It's easy to pray for that enemy of yours to die because you are feeding your flesh with the too much bold empowered man to think only of itself and his own interests. So anytime somebody else does something wrong against you, your flesh will dominate faster to react against that person because that flesh has been trained so much to be selfish and thinking only of itself and its own interest. So that is why Christ, you see, even in that structure, there's no place there he mentioned anything that we should ask selfishly or I, me. Because he's trying to tell us that that's a dangerous position to stay on. Even though you can be there as you grow. When the flesh, when the man, human ego and the physical structure of man is too much in form of asking things only of his own interest, it will always react to fight back, to revenge. And so that kind of mind will be highly established in unforgiveness. And then now that's a dangerous position. Hallelujah. Now, what is a dangerous position about that? So we can now see that among these three categories and class of prayers, in respect of the fact that their power to produce result, positive result, stands that the prayer of love, praying with others and for others, is number one, first and important. Then you have the selfish, which is you alone and your interest. And then the other one is just the problem. Be let me now help us to understand that the prayer of hatred, which is any prayer against any man, no matter what the person does against you, once you pray or desire it against the person, you are actually praying the prayer of hatred and you are actually in the terrain of the devil by that kind of thought then talkless of discharging the energy in prayer and if you are in the territory of somebody he must have power to control you when you are operating in the realms of darkness the prince of darkness must control you when you are operating in the realms of light the prince of light must control you so the prince of light is jesus the christ and by the holy spirit leading and guiding and controlling the prince of darkness is under the leadership of Lucifer, the devil, and his network. 
Now, everything that is contrary to the love of God falls in the zone of darkness. That is why in that implication, we see in the account of God's through Christ revealing to us in the book of Revelation where we saw the prayer protocol. Hallelujah. Amen. I want you to say prayer protocol. Prayer protocol. Say louder prayer protocol. prayer protocol I'm not going to get into the specific scriptures but in the book of Revelation we will see there that it's expressed to us through the revelation of our Lord Jesus Christ to John for us that there are angels that will receive the prayers of the saints which comes and mix it together with incense which is now carried in a bowl like incense to be taken to the throne that shows us how when we pray here you discharge energy of that thought in your heart of your wishes whatever you ask you can ask primarily in the prayer process complete you put energy on it we have learned that about sound dynamics and when you discharge it you you have just said word in heaven or in the realms beyond the physical they are carrying it like a material thing in a bowl hallelujah now the angels are carrying this to go and present to the throne so you see the fact that we pray in the name of the lord jesus doesn't mean that prayer just gone and is in the hand of jesus that is a protocol the question now is in that picture of the book of revelation those angels that will carry that prayer of the saints are you a saint yes. Yes. of course everyone that believes in christ a disciple of christ is a saint your prayers are being carried by this angel that's the revelation of the protocol of prayer now the angel is the angel of the lord jesus christ so whose throne is he taking into is presented to the throne of the lord jesus christ hallelujah or to the throne of the father where in the account of revelation we see that there is the father seated on the throne and the lamb also on the throne that was laying referring to jesus the christ so the angel of the lord jesus christ or the holy angel of god cannot take cannot carry a prayer request in that bowl to the throne of the Lord God of who is love if that prayer is against love there will be react contradiction it can't enter God is love the throne of God is love everything with him on his own is love the angel is to carry our prayer to present to that throne if that prayer is against or contrary to love it cannot stay on that throne it cannot be presented there and therefore the angel will not take it but now here on earth you have discharged the enemy the energy that enemy that wants me to die let him die for us you spoke by words the revelation proved to us that it is not words there hallelujah now when you have discharged that energy in that prayer remember as i taught us about the the scientific formula of mc mc E equals to MC, which is energy equals to mass time. We saw that what the energy will be materialized. So if you discharge, if we discharge the energy in prayer, it will be materialized, captured. That is why we see that the angel they said is the prayer that the, the prayer of the saints that as incense. The same like you have material incense here, but it may be according to their standard in the uh, celestial position. Now, if that prayer, as it's living, as you have released that discharge, it has gone. And the material 
element that the prayer is all the what I can call the astral element or the celestial element that it is in that celestial material if it's not received by the holy angel because it did not verify love is it going to disappear hallelujah you will understand that if it's not received by the holy angels because what refused the prayer not to enter in that bowl in that hand of that angel is that that bowl is full of love so anything with an iota energy discharge that is contrary to love cannot enter there it the, that prayer materialization or that astral element of that prayer must go to another kind of angel hallelujah so now the simple analogy is that there is also another throne what is the opposite this throne is love the other throne is hatred and the one is opposite to another love is the opposite of hatred hatred is the opposite of love and remember hatred i said is a twin brother and family husband and wife uh, with anger and the family of their children is bitterness unforgiveness and the rest the rest the rest all that grudge and so on now so he will be carried by it will go to the end there will be an angel on the opposite throne that that prayer will be accepted will be will taken and so it will be used by that come and the primary use is that word it will be used against the will of God for man beginning with that man would send that energy hallelujah so this is why now that energy captured which we have discharged in that prayer is used is captured and stored because if something if you if they give you something if they give you a certain material now you collect it you can keep it you can save it you can store it if you are not going to use it now you can use it sometimes is that not true so anytime we discharge any energy in prayer from our thoughts contrary to the law of Christ any prayer with any thought of grudge hatred unforgiveness against anyone that's where it's going and it's always captured and if it's captured by the other altar it will be stored with the name of the man who sent it if they don't use it immediately which will be used to a, a against you against mankind if they don't use it immediately it's stored they will use it when they need it hallelujah so now when a high satanic agent is against you and he consult his spiritual list or his priest or satanic priest or whatever occultic master those are things that they check so if that person is fighting and we are praying and praying is the nasa looking they will check and they find records of a lot of energies that you have invested there they will use them against you that's why Christ is teaching us to focus on developing our prayer momentum and prayer habit on the selfless prayer based on love hallelujah there are other positive and more plus 
things that follows anything you do in love with the love of Christ. So the list is unlimited. But besides, this is what Christ told us in the structure as teaching us the lesson of prayer. It's his word I'm presenting, not my words. So let those who have ears, let them hear what the Spirit is saying. Somebody say amen. You do not lose or lost anything when you pray for people, for others. And one of the quickest investments to get breakthrough in certain particular prayer need we have is to pray for someone you know that has that same need. In, lift up that person praying on that need, whether by supplication or intercession. So in this perspective, we are going to pray for others. So it's good also, let me help to define to us and clarify certain aspects. Let's read and uh, Philippians chapter 4 verse 6. Be anxious for nothing but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. Let your request be made known to God. Hallelujah. The word of the Lord through Paul said in everything. So nothing is excluded to be prayed for. The only thing let it be done in line with what Christ has established. In everything by prayer and supplication let our requests let your requests so you are free to bring any requests as your personal requests but like we understood always involve others even if you don't have any specific person Lord, bless me with this. And those who are in need of this somewhere, somewhere. If you know some, you mention. That spirit of including others in your prayer is what Christ is teaching us in the prayer content and pattern of what he began with the word hour. Hallelujah. Now, the first thing the first word that he is telling us to mention is our not my that tell you the priority of his focus of what brings the power and the answers to the prayer he prays and then you go on that you see our is the center of God's will that's why it also said let his will be done on earth as it's in heaven not my will not your will so we will now go and see the same dimension now goes why our prayer should be focused more on God's will to be done not our desire which is contrary to his will. And that cannot be a, a part of our prayer life if our prayer life is more full of selfish prayer. So in that Philippians 4 he said in everything so let no teaching anywhere ever tell you that there is something you cannot pray for. Even if some people have certain breakthroughs and they do not pray for having the breakthrough. They don't have to say that others should not pray for that thing. Because the scripture says in everything you can pray for it. Is that true? Because prayer is beyond just praying for the thing you want. So in everything, you always express your desire to God. Which is why it's not wrong to ask personally. But always remember to include others. Not only those who are your interest. Because when you mean others, here, when you say, my wife, my children, my family, is still your interest. The others should include people who are not your interest what is not your interest for your nation community the body of christ and others others that is not your personal what you don't have personal interest or gain on it but why i ask i want to help us understand this 
is that we see that in Philippians account, there in that Philippians 4, Paul is telling us in everything we should not be worried or be anxious. We should be uh, not we should not be anxious or not be worried about things, but in everything, no matter what happened, by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. So our prayers must always include thanksgiving primarily from christ that model of prayer start praying with thanking god in praise and worship and your prayer in thanking god in praise it shows that but we see in philippians 4 6 it says by prayer and supplication so the question and which i want to help us understand is that if you mention prayer and supplication so there's a difference between prayer and supplication is that clear if it's clear say amen, amen. amen. philippians 4 6 he said we should not be anxious or worried for anything but in everything by prayer and supplication so they are there are two different things you have prayer you have supplication so what is the difference now let us now get uh, the reading again of that Philippians 4 6. Read. Be anxious for nothing. Be anxious for nothing. But in everything by prayer and supplication. By prayer and supplication. Stop there. So we see there is prayer, there is supplication. There are two different words. They mean two different things. That's why he mentioned the two of them in one verse of scripture. If they were the same, there's no need to mention them twice in the same statement right amen now read first timothy that the same paul now in first timothy chapter 2 verse 1 therefore i exhort first of all therefore i exhort first of all that supplications that supplication prayers prayers intercessions intercession now stop there so here now we see three three things are mentioned all of them are prayer related first there is that supplication prayers so we already see that there's a difference between prayer and supplication and paul is not repeating himself here just for repeating and then now he added now intercession so we need to understand the difference between supplication prayers and intercession all of them fall in the group of prayers but there are different kinds now finish that verse one or just read the verse one again from the beginning Therefore, I exhort first of all that supplications, prayers, intercessions, and giving of thanks be made for all men. Hallelujah. So now, for all men, giving of thanks. If you look at the picture, in the Philippians account, Paul said supplication and prayers with thanksgiving. We already know thanksgiving must be there. But in the Philippians account, he told us Philippians supplication and prayer he didn't add intercession there because he's telling us that has to do with prayer we pray primarily including us let your requests be made known your requests but here in Timothy he's telling us prayer to pray for all men there is intercession added there. So that will not give us a clue to understand the difference between intercession and supplication and prayer itself. Hallelujah. Now, all the prayer in this picture are doing or dealing with asking God or making a request to the Lord in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. So what is supplication? What is intercession? And what is prayer then? Prayer is the general word of the request you make when you are praying. So prayer includes everything you are praying as request and other aspect of prayer. Whether prayer of forgiveness, whether prayer of uh, consecration, whether prayer of commitment, all that falls under prayer. But supplication is a prayer which is a specific kind. Intercession is a prayer which is a specific kind. Is that clear for somebody to say amen? amen. 
Now, because the Lord is teaching us to pray selfless prayer means we include others. We must understand the difference between intercession and supplication. Intercession and supplication. These are prayers that you are making requests, praying for others. But intercession, take note of this if you are writing and you note it very well. Intercession is when you are inter requesting or praying for others, praying for those who are not yet saved. Unbelievers or those you know. That's why intercession is added when Paul said pray for all men because in the all men you have people who are believers already and those who are not believers. So for those who are believers, instead of intercession, is supplication. Is that clear for somebody to say amen? amen? So you see that both intercession and supplication is when you are praying for others. And like Paul said, all men there. So in the all men group, you have some who are believers you in supplicate for them and you have some who are not believers you intercede for them so the two of them have two different roles what that primarily means is that what go now and read for us matthew chapter 9 verse 36 like i told us for an unbeliever his first primary need is for his soul to be saved because he's a dead person before the lord so the kind of prayer you should pray for such more, which is intercessory prayer, has to be more based on beginning with the salvation. But now, we most times, we pray and ask God to save somebody. That's wrong. God already saved all those who are to be saved through Jesus Christ when he went to the cross. He now told us what to do in that context even before he was going to the cross. Read now that Matthew chapter 9 verse 38. Or read from verse 36. But when he saw the multitudes, he was moved with compassion for them because they were weary and scattered like sheep having no shepherd. Then he said to his disciples, The harvest truly is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Therefore pray the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into his harvest. Hallelujah. Though that is not limited to in terms of harvest of souls, but in the context that we can see the harvest ready is referring to people which primarily include the soul's harvest. He told us the harvest is ready. They are ready for salvation. But what you do is that you pray. You pray to the Lord of the harvest. Though he is the Lord that has the harvest, He's not going to harvest them without your prayers. So now, do we now see why Christ is telling us to focus on praying for others? Imagine that Jehovah God himself, the Lord of the harvest there is him and the manifestation of that is the Holy Spirit. So actually, the day the Holy Spirit came during the day of the Holy Pentecost, the harvest was overripe from that day to be harvested Christ was saying he was already ready so he was now finishing the work once he now sent the Holy Spirit harvesting starts so that's why the Holy Spirit has to come to be the one to convict people to be saved but now imagine what Christ is telling us there he is the Lord of the harvest he is the one that has the harvest yet he wants the harvest to be saved but he cannot go and save the harvest if you do not pray to him for that harvest to be safe. And now, if our prayer life is preoccupied with selfish prayers, do we now see how much God cannot do certain things which he has programmed by his word if we do not pray for others? Yes. The Lord of the harvest, he is his harvest. Yet, he said you have to pray for him. 
to send some laborers for that harvest to be harvested. Now, what will that be to that man who is praying that prayer to the Lord of the harvest for that harvest to be safe? Will that Lord of the harvest not reward that man? Yes. But that man stood there and prayed only asking that Lord to give me this, give me that, give me this, give my this, that. He will only receive any answer to that request based on the merit of what he can and much of our own ability cannot produce enough because there is still always a lot in our life that is not qualified but the one you pray for others which is a prayer of love the lord of the harvest will reward you because it means that every one soul that is saved because of your prayer there is what christ called the reward of the whole world is not equal to that price you are partaking of that blessing so this is why when we pray for others and include us and many others in our prayers, it's easy to get a lot of breakthroughs in our lives, even in our own individual needs, than what we get when we pray for ourselves only. But above all, it helps you to see and express the compassion for others so that you don't go and pray self a hatred prayer against someone who hurts you. Because your tongue, your mouth, your heart is preoccupied praying for others. Hallelujah. So intercession is when we inter when we pray for others. That's why when we pray for community nation, we intercede. Because there you are making a request involving what is not specific for the believers. But once it's addressed like that Philippians account, Paul was actually addressing to the believers on coming to God with their request and so since they are believers mostly they will have even if they are praying for other believers it will be supplication hallelujah Amen. and like as i explained every believer primary need you pray for should be to pray according to the teachings of paul still and many other teachings in that line in colossians chapter 1 verse 9 read colossians chapter 1 verse 9 and 12 and after that, I will want us to make our heart to pray. We're going to pray today for others more than we pray for ourselves. Hallelujah. Read Colossians chapter 1 verse 9 to 12. For this reason. Or just read Colossians chapter 1 verse 9 and 10. For this reason, we also since the day we had it do not cease to pray for you. And to ask that you may be filled with the knowledge of his will and all wisdom and spiritual understanding. That you may walk worthy of the Lord, fully pleasing him, being fruitful in every good work and increasing in the knowledge of God. Hallelujah. Amen. To walk worthy of the Lord. To fully please him. All that Paul in that prayer subject is making us to know. For a believer, the primary need to do the will of God is for him to be filled with the knowledge of God's will in all wisdom and spiritual understanding. Because it's simple. If I'm current in the knowledge of God's will, I'm having the wisdom to apply it, understanding the application of the other wisdom, and having understanding how everything I do will bear fruits because there's understanding and that fruit will be fruits of righteousness will be pleasing God I'll be walking in God's will fulfilling God's purpose for my life on daily basis so primary need for anybody once you want to pray for people check with the Holy Spirit in your spirit if the Holy Spirit confirmed that that person is a believer that's the main need he needs even when we give people things for a believer, if he is filled with the knowledge of God's will by your prayer, you are praying that prayer, he can get all those things you can give him materially, easily. 
Because the knowledge of God's will in all wisdom and spiritual understanding is what helps us receive anything we need from God and walk in God's will. Hallelujah. So for an unbeliever, primarily, first thing is salvation. Ask the Lord to send laborers. Don't ask the Lord to save them. They are saved already through Christ. What remains is for them to get the message and believe. Whosoever believe and confess Jesus Christ as Lord. And that God raised him from the dead shall be saved. So Cornelius now want to be saved. But he needed a laborer to bring to him the word of the message of salvation about Jesus who has died and resurrected. The angel came. The angel cannot get him saved because the message for salvation is not committed to angels. It's committed to man. So Peter now, so now the laborers here in the picture plays two roles. That prayer, even Cornelius' prayer himself, brought him the angelic laborer first. The angel came to him. The angelic laborers will go and clear away certain aspects where there are demonic spirit or forces involved resisting that. But all of them are laborers. Then the human laborers now must be the one to present the word. So, though the angel is present, though the angel has cleared the way of any other angelic resistance or demonic resistance, Cornelius cannot be saved until there is a laborer who is a man that will bring the message of salvation. The message can come in our day to day through social media, internet, YouTube, phone television whatever the important thing is that that message must be received believe confess for the person to be saved but not that god should save him as if god has has not saved him christ did not say go and save him he said go and pray to the lord and he will send if you pray mostly he will send you or he will arrange but now this is very important because paul had told us the first and most important thing which is in line with what Christ is teaching us is to pray for all men and part of our life benefits is the things we give and one of the primary thing we give is our spiritual energy which is praying for others that is why Christ teaching us to pray selfless prayers brings us a lot of reward because there are three main things we give in life to our in to be recorded in our account in heaven that result to our blessings here on earth one is our time you can give to help somebody two is the spiritual energy you give by praying for someone or people and more powerful of that when their prayer fasting is also added and three is your material or financial resources so look at it. If our prayer anytime is involving others, praying for others, don't you see that we are giving our energy? It's recorded in our account. Hallelujah. Now, an intervention to our life in whatever we request from heaven is based on what is in the record of that account. That's why a life which is void of selfless prayer, which is full of selfish prayer, will be having almost little or nothing in his account for intervention so when he requests certain things he may not see them or if they are coming they may come very slow hallelujah so let's say that the selfless prayer of praying for others as christ taught us is like when you are traveling to a destination using the the plane and then the selfish which is not wrong you are still going to the destination it's like when you are traveling to that destination using a bike. We see that with a plane you will reach faster and easier. That is the, why the prayer of love is more powerful. The bike example here, it will take a longer time. It will meet a lot of maybe arm robbers on the way. It can stop. That's why you may not even have it. So, I advise us to understand the importance to pray for others and include that consciousness that by doing so we must never pray against any man never think anything contrary to love because that one 
it's not only going to make us not have a breakthrough but it's also giving weapons to our enemy to deal with us the more may you not be a victim of that if you have been in the past like most of us have been i pray that the lord will remove you from any consciousness of praying hatred prayer and launch you into the consciousness of praying love prayers praying for others for good in the name of our lord jesus christ So, that is our focus for today. Christ telling us to pray selfless prayer, prayer full of love, praying for others. And Paul told us, first of all, it's a priority. So, prerequisite in prayer is number one, ask, praying, forgiving your enemies, which you do by asking the Father to forgive them. And alongside asking God to forgive you for whatever you have done wrong with someone, and be willing to apologize when there is need to and then now you start the prayer by including others in every prayer thanking God in praise worship ending with thanking God in praise and believing God by the next program we will look at our father in heaven that one is a position of father in heaven is a position of God telling us that when we come to pray we should see God as our father and that father who is faithful and lovely that means it's a statement of faith that you cannot have a father that loves you and desire well for you and you have a need that will not be met so when we are coming to god you must know that that prayer will be answered but it is this prayer protocol and these principles that because we mix them we bypass them not that god cannot give us what we are asking he said he is ready to give good things to those who ask because he's a father and compare us with early parents but the reason is we cannot get anything if the prayer the angel as i've told you in that protocol does not present it to the throne and if even it was to be presented and something influenced that it can be withdrawn because there's a contention of the negative diabolic prayer in the other altar. May the Lord continue to show us mercy in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Most of the times when we are to pray for others, especially praying for authorities, nations, and what is not our interest in summary, people are forced to and even when you give a prayer point in that direction, you see how people respond to it sleepishly. But whenever a prayer point concerns our interest, where it, it, I, I focus on those selfish positions, you see energy comes there. And then very strong when the prayer is against our enemy. Even the person who was sleeping and snoring will wake up and fire that prayer with strength. It shows you exactly who is controlling those, that kind of prayer because we are practical of what I've just shared now, right? Hallelujah amen. Are you still there, not sleeping? Let me get amen if you are still awake amen. Okay, one person is still awake, the rest are sleeping <laughs> Praise the Lord Hallelujah. I was sharing the fact that we can see in our experiences that every time when you are to pray a prayer that has to do with you a prayer that pray against your enemy you see that you have energy you, you, you sense inner energy to do that pray with more power <laughs> and then even when it is you which is not against the enemy you have power but one is to intercede or supplicate for someone especially for someone who is an enemy asking God to forgive him that one we we'll pray, we we'll see that sometimes even something in us is telling us that we should even sleep and not pray. So that is giving you a clue of which spirit and which force is behind those prayers against man. 
whether you call him a witch or wizard, as long as he's a human being. Paul says, that is fighting in the flesh and you can never win. For we rest not against flesh and blood. But against principalities, against powers, against rulers of darkness. This, this thing, principality, they operate by this wisdom of God's will. If you act contrary, they use it against you. It doesn't matter how emotional you cry. Princes, principalities, the word prince, principal. The word prince means rulers. And rulers are attached to kings. Kings rule by wisdom. So when he said we wrestle against principalities, it's beyond the fact that we see it as some demons and stuff. He's telling you that high profile satanic spirits that operate with high wisdom. They can't do anything outside God's will. They look at God's will, which they use, you have fallen to use against you. Like that particular one, especially when you pray any prayer against any man, whether you call him your enemy or what. Or they create a trap for you to do what is against God's will for them to use against you. They are principles. They don't just fight emotionally. So we must walk in their wisdom. Hallelujah. And now use a greater wisdom against them. Now Paul told us in that Colossians chapter 1 verse 9 we read, he said the prayer is that we will be filled with the knowledge of God's will in all wisdom. How many wisdom? Now what does that tell you? There are different kinds of wisdom. Is that true? Amen. Now, James, we have scriptural analysis of four kinds of wisdom by James. James told us of the kind of wisdom. He said, This one is not the one from above, but is number one, sensual, which is mental. There's number two, common, or number one, common, number two, sensual which is mental, and number three, diabolic. So he's speaking in James that this wisdom which they are applying, which involves bitterness, is not a wisdom from above. We already see that it's a wisdom against love. He says not above. So there's a wisdom from above, which is based on the love of Christ. And then he said, but the one in that picture I was talking about, which is involved of selfishness and diabolism, he said that one is not the wisdom from above, but it's what number one common natural which is common what you call common sense sometimes you are born you know that you take food in your hand a child doesn't put the food in their nose he put it in the mouth that's common sense he was born naturally with that kind of wisdom now he said first is natural common and then second that one he said it was sensual mental you develop it through the learning anyhow you call it scholastics whatever you read and you develop your brain some people reason a lot by what the scripture says the scripture says but they lack the wisdom from above because the wisdom from above is beyond what the scripture says it's what the spirit of god is saying backed by the scripture now then he said it is diabolic so if paul told us to pray that we should be filled with all wisdom and james now shows us that there are four kinds of wisdom there that means Paul is expecting us in that prayer to be filled with these four kinds of wisdom, at least from scriptural analysis. Is that true? Amen. Amen. Colossians 1.9, in the prayer, Paul is praying for the saints. He's praying that God will fill us. You should pray for God to fill you with the knowledge of his will, number one, in all wisdom. So, biblically, we are able to analyze all wisdom, at least four of them. The wisdom of Abgoves, who is the wisdom of Christ. The wisdom which is natural, common sense. The wisdom which is sensual, your academic ability or development of your brain through any form of studies. And the wisdom, diabolic. So, Paul is expecting us to have the knowledge, the wisdom, the diabolic wisdom. <laughs> now did you now see that when Paul said we are not ignorant of the devices of the, of the devil you know what he was saying 
That's diabolic wisdom. Hallelujah. Let me ask you a simple question. And you will understand why we must take. You cannot really be able to operate if you don't follow. Because it's the Christ teaching that has a lot of knowledge there exposing certain things that help us to, to know this diabolic how they operate. Look at it. United States of America have the strongest army, suppose. He goes to a war with a small country, maybe a dot country with no army. So the United States go with their armory and everything, preparing to wipe those people in less than two hours or one hour. Hallelujah. But they are, the weapon of those people the weapon of those people is one small insect called a bee. And United States did not know about that weapon. They now carry all their all this machine gun, everything, and goes there. Before they sit to start launching, all of them B comes and starts stomping them. Would they stay there to fire anything? If they have to survive, wouldn't they run for their life? Now, but don't they have all the mighty weapons? Did they win the war? Why did they not win? They are ignorant of the weapon of their enemy. That's why you, the Paul said we should pray for us to be filled with all wisdom which in one of the wisdom is diabolic wisdom so you need to know on, that is why some of this revelation we have and some of the background of the exposure of teachings from the occult grandmaster and all these different kind of backgrounds is necessary because the reason why we pray against our witches and wizards is because we are ignorant that that prayer is a weapon in their hand against us like the bee. If the United States, for example, now know that the weapon of that small country they are going to fight, B is included in their weapon, they will now go and dress prepared. Like people who are working in B thing. Does do they have fear of B? Does B do them anything? It doesn't the honey the bees doesn't do them anything, right? Because they dress in a way that is protective from the from the bee. Amen. Because they know. So if now you imagine that this United States have all these armory and weapons, because they didn't know that that people they have that weapon, they will not dress in that way, so they cannot escape. But if they know, they will not dress in a way that, for example, they have the armor that cover every aspect of their being. They will not have anything to do to be afraid of the bee because they have knowledge of it. That is why we need that wisdom as well. So the Lord Jesus Christ in his teachings helped us to know certain things which others didn't. He knew that when you keep grudge, when you don't pray for your enemy to be forgiven, when you don't pray for the other people, pray for all men, don't intercede for your nation and authorities, he knows that that is against you. And he now said, don't hate that man love him now he knows better than Moses because Moses did not have that level of light Moses says kill the witch Christ now comes who knows better he now gives us the part he said uh, those people when you kill witch is a weapon in the hand of the devil against you hallelujah so we, we we see now this part is telling us we start prayer our father involve others to be in the prayer it's a powerful weapon on our advantage against the enemy let us follow what he's advising us tonight first of all i want you to go ahead 
and begin to make sure you are at peace with God. And begin to ask him to forgive you first for anything or anyone you are holding grudge of and ask him to forgive that one or whosoever has done you wrong. And ask him to help you pray as you're supposed to pray. Go ahead and begin to settle peace with God in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Let's get Zechariah chapter as you settle peace with God, pray. Ask the Lord to forgive you for whosoever you are holding grudge of or of any unforgiveness. And ask him to forgive whosoever has done you wrong. And let him forgive you for whatever you have done wrong to somebody. That is very important to settle peace with God. You cannot come before the Lord without a pure heart and expect the angel to carry your prayers. Read Zechariah chapter 12 verse 10 and I will pour out pour, and I will pour on the house of David and on the inhabitants of Jerusalem the spirit of grace and supplication hallelujah so there is that which is known as the spirit of grace and supplication and in the Old Testament picture there which is applied with us also today talking about pouring that spirit on the house of David we belong in the house of David. Jesus Christ came from the lineage of David. And he said, if ye believe in Christ, ye are Christ. So we also belong to that. The spirit of grace. There's a spirit that grace of grace. And the spirit of supplication. On a general perspective, the supplication is talking about prayer. That's the spirit of prayer. If you have prayed a prayer asking God to show you mercy forgive you of whosoever you are holding grudge and ask him to forgive of your wrongdoing now let us pray this prayer and ask the Lord for the spirit of grace and supplication upon you a fresh outpouring of the spirit of grace and supplication that means you are asking the Lord for a fresh outpouring upon you now of the spirit of prayer the spirit of grace and the spirit of prayer all kinds of the prayer you have heard the prayer of supplication the prayer of intercession the prayer of making requests and any form of prayer prayer of forgiveness whatever lord fill me release a fresh outpouring of the spirit of grace upon me now lord release a fresh outpouring of the spirit of prayer upon me now lord release that spirit for me to pray as i supposed to pray go ahead and pray ask for that spirit now to be poured upon you thank you father release upon your people a fresh spirit of prayer a fresh spirit and oh lord release upon us pour upon your people pour upon every one of us the spirit of grace the spirit of prayer to pray the prayer in line with the teachings of christ I thought somebody is praying that prayer. Ask the Lord up to release upon you a fresh outpouring of the spirit of prayer. Thank you, Father. In the mighty name of our Lord Jesus Christ, we have prayed. Paul says, pray for all men. We want to begin by the prayer the Lord Jesus told us to pray according to Matthew chapter 9 verse 38. Pray for the Lord of the harvest to send for laborers to his harvest. Every unsaved soul in any part of this world, wherever they are, within and around you, we're going to ask the Lord of the harvest, Lord, in the name of the Lord Jesus, send forth laborers to every unsaved soul, wherever they are. 
for salvation, to minister salvation for them.